It's time for Recipe of the Day. If you are looking for the perfect, fun, and delicious side dish to have with dinner tonight, I have got it for you. This recipe is for baked whole Vidalia onions, and it's perfect right now because Vidalia onions are in season. We're near the beginning of the season, so you're almost for sure going to find them in your grocery store, and this is just the perfect way to really enjoy them when they're at their peak. First, in case you haven't heard me talk about what Vidalia onions are and why they're so amazing, I'm going to start there. I call them the champagne of onions because they are sweet and wonderful and special like champagne, but also because the naming is very similar to what we know about champagne. So you may have heard before that sparkling wine is only allowed to be called champagne by law if it is grown in the Champagne region of France. Well, it is also the case that Vidalia onions are only allowed to be called Vidalia onions by law if they're grown in the southeast region of Georgia. And that is according to both Georgia state law and it's in the United States Code of Federal Regulations. So if something has a Vidalia label on it, you know that it is coming from just one of a few counties in Georgia, well, maybe like 15 or so, that are allowed to grow these onions. And they have to be a particular variety of onion. They have to be the yellow granix hybrid. That variety can be grown in other places. It is said that it will not be as sweet because you need the climate and the soil of the southeast region of Georgia to make that perfect Vidalia onion. But regardless, you can grow it somewhere else. But if you grow it somewhere other than in the southeast area of Georgia, the Vidalia region, you cannot call it a Vidalia onion. So that is why I say it is the champagne of onions. Okay, so now you know a little bit about this background. I'm going to tell you how to make these whole baked Vidalia onions. So this is a traditional dish to make with Vidalias to the point where when I was at the Vidalia Onion Festival, they were actually giving out these like bakers, this kind of like little pot that fits a Vidalia Onion perfectly that you could bake the onion in. I don't have mine anymore, so this does not require any special equipment, just a aluminum foil. But yeah, it's that kind of traditional thing where it even has its own equipment that goes with it. You know what I mean? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to get out your Vidalia Onion, preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you're going to peel the onion, leave leaving the root and the stem intact. And that's just because we just want the peel off. We want as much of the onion as possible. If you're having trouble getting it off, a paring knife will help you there. Now, you're putting the onion root side down. That's the root is like the little shaggy end, right? Now, if that sits nice and flat, leave it alone. But if it's not really flat, you can just slice off a little bit from the bottom and make a nice flat base for yourself. Then you're going to use a paring knife to cut a one inch deep cone into the top of the onion. You're cutting out that stem and making a cone. And what we're trying to do is, you know how onions have all those little layers in them? We want to get access to a whole bunch of those layers, kind of going quite far into the onion so that when we put the butter and flavorings in there and it goes in the oven and heats up, all that's going to go into all those layers in between those layers of onion. So that's why we want that cone. That's why we want it to go fairly deep in. Then into there, you're going to put a bouillon cube. You can use vegetable, chicken, or beef, mushroom bouillon cube if you have that. Now, I know that might sound a little bit weird, but this is a traditional way of doing things, and I swear it works. It's really, really delicious. So you put the bouillon cube into that hole, into that little cone that you cut, and then you fill the rest of the hole with softened butter. You're going in with like one to two tablespoons. It should be nice and level on the top of the onion, really filling that cone. And then you're going to season the onion with salt and pepper onto the butter and all around it. Then you pop that onion onto a big sheet of foil, large enough to really encase it, and you're still having it root side down, so your like butter cone is on the top, and then you're bringing the foil up and around, all the way up, and encasing it nicely, and twisting the top. You kind of twist it to look like the top of an onion. There's a picture at the link that I'm sending to of how it looks encased, and then the presentation is really cool. Now that's going on a baking sheet and going into the oven for 45 to 60 minutes until it's nice and tender. Of course, I always make more than one of these. I don't usually make this one for myself, so you do one onion per person, and they just all go on the baking sheet together, 45 to 60 minutes. They're going to be nice and tender. You can test that with like a toothpick or something, just make sure it's nice and soft. You're serving that warm so that all that butter is nice and hot. Maybe a piece of bread on the side to dip in there. It is such a wonderful treat for this time of year. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you're listening to this, when Vidalia onions are not in season and you can't get them, any sweet onion will do. You can also do this with a normal white or yellow onion. You just want to add a little bit of sugar, mix some sugar in with the butter, because otherwise that onion is going to be a little bit harsh. 
I'm going to put the link to this recipe in the show notes, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there. And I just want to let you know, we have a really good Facebook group that goes along with this podcast. It's the recipe of the day Facebook group. You can find that at cookthestory.com slash Facebook ROTD. And you get all the links to the recipes that I talk about there, conversation about the recipes. It's really fun. But also my own Facebook page for Cook the Story is really vibrant and exciting. I share recipes on there all the time and people share them and have conversations with the recipes there too. You can find that at facebook.com slash cook the story. Hit follow while you're there and you will get all these tasty recipes, tips, videos, all the things. It's a great place to be. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. (laughs) 